Hey, 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 it is a new year. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yay, welcome, welcome, welcome. I was over on Facebook chatting, still on Facebook, because I streamed to both. But there's a lot going on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hey, Paul. Hey, Ernest. Happy New Year, right? Big energy coming in as we start this new year. We've got that new moon today. Yay. We started out dark with the moon, so we did shift to that today. Yay, yay, yay. So as we go to start, this is my Empowered Spirit Show, my live stream where I go live. I talk about the podcast. Yay. Check out the podcast. You really love it. I actually did a journey through the wheel of life, working with the cards, looking at what came forward, talking about the year ahead. It's a really fun projection of the energy forward. That was on the podcast this week. And a shout out to my sponsors. Hey, 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 Forecast Salon. Thank you so much for being a sponsor, for sharing the episodes and everything that you do. Located here in Homewood, Alabama, dedicated to making a change in the industry through creativity and education. Yay, give them a huge shout out. And I give a shout out to Ritual Shelter as well. I read cards there. I do events for them. Love them so much. All right. So here we are, beginning of a new year. Time to really look at the energy. You know, I talk about the medicine wheel all the time. And so for me, really, it is this circular energy. But whenever we come to the year, we always think like, okay, flip the page over, cut, forget, start again. But not exactly how it is. It's really not. And so in order to kind of help you look at it tonight, I actually have a guest coming on. Sophia will be coming on in a moment, and we're going to look at what this energy is for this year. All right, we were talking about it today, had a beautiful, fun, shout out, shout out Magic City Meditations, Chris and Bridget, so much fun doing vision boards. But we were talking about the idea of that mem going around 2022. Let's ain't snix that. Let's not, let's not say that. No, it's 2022. All right. It's a different year. We've had two years of experience working in this COVID energy. We got to make some shifts and changes. And a lot of that Capricorn energy coming forward right now is really about that kind of energy. It really is. So I really wanted to talk about it a little more. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy for me to get out of this year was not easy. How about for you? Glad to get it over with. Let us know. Post in the comments. As Sophie starts to come on, I'll look for her. Invite her on. Sophie, come on in. I see you. Let me know. Hard, easy, couldn't wait, reluctant. What was it for you? Let me know how you really kind of found that transition of time for you as well. And now here we are starting the year. Let's see. I see Sophie. You're waving. I'm going to wave back at you. There you go. Waved at her. Send a request. Here we go. I love technology. Go live. Sophia, yay. Here she comes. Welcome, welcome. Come on over here to Instagram if you're watching from Facebook. Hey, there you are. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It just, it's, I mean, it's crazy. I'm like, what day is it? Sunday? January 2nd? Wild. Yeah. It's that week that we forget what day it is. Yeah. Yeah, Definitely. pretty, Pretty much. Yeah. So as I was saying, I'm not really an astrologer. I like to follow, I'm about to sneeze. I like to follow the cosmic forces. It helps me understand my life. I've always been ruled by the moon. So the moon is really what I follow the most, all right? I know there's a lot more. So I thought I would actually bring on an astrologer because I like to do with, deal with like, how does it make you feel? How your energy should be? Should it be out there? Should it be pulled in? How the energy is affected by the cosmic forces. But Sophie's going to talk a little bit about the, the new moon that we have and the energy that that does bring in as we start the year, right? So, so yeah. yeah, as an astrologer, you also help people understand more and more for their own health, their wealth, and their business as well. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. For everyone who's watching live or catching the replay, it is so lovely to be with you. Um, I told Terry, I just moved into a house and none of my furniture has arrived. So apologies for the echo. Um, You know, I think what I love about following the moon and honoring the moon cycles is twofold. The first is that in astrology, the moon represents our emotions our needs. Every planet is associated with a part of the body and the moon is associated with the belly and the breasts. So in short, the moon symbolizes what you need. And the other thing that I love about kind of honoring the moon and the moon's phases is that the moon has phases. It changes, right? So it allows us to be in flow. It allows us to change, to have moments and, 
you know, seasons of our own lives, phases of our own lives where we're maybe full and bright and extroverted and out loud and seasons that are more introverted and quiet yeah. and within. Yeah. And it just feels so fitting that we have a new moon on the second day of the, you know, as you and I have talked about, man-made calendar year and yeah. that it's Capricorn. Yeah. It's so fitting. Um, Capricorn is about getting stuff done. It's about work. It's about your great work. But, you know, what is often talked about with Capricorn is just that and that alone. I saw so much on social media today about, you know, what are you going to do? What goals are you going to set? What are you going to achieve? And at its best, Capricorn is about integrity, taking the time to turn inwards, to look within, to have solitude so that you can get clear on what your own unique inner authority is. And then from that place, be able to turn outwards and share your gifts with the world to make the yeah. world a different and a better place. So that's the energy yeah. that we're carrying into this new year. It's not just about getting back to work, right? And like, and I think too, because the nose are changing and all, it's actually really mm -hmm. pushing us to look at like, what is your sole purpose? What is yeah. that shit? I know I was, I was like in the tub last week crying, going, where's my sole purpose? I've lost my focus. I don't know what to do. And then I opened my journal this week. It's like, that is the energy we're working through. That oh. is the truth of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think something that, and you and I talked about this earlier, what I've been hearing a lot of today is guilt and people being triggered because on social media, on Instagram, in every facet of your life, whether it's a workout or eating or family or travel or whatever, it's like 2022, you know, guns blazing, huge energy. What are you going to create? What are you going to do? What's this year all going to be about? Resolutions, blah, blah, blah. And many people feel tired. Many people don't feel that gung-ho energy. And the energy of the cosmos is very much the opposite of that. Okay, let's go. Let's get excited. Let's put smiles on our faces. Yeah. Capricorn is a yin is a yin sign. This is now a time to turn inwards. Yeah, it has earth energy which grounds us. But I so agree. And I think we were talking about this before because I see everybody's got their calendar planned, and I'm thinking like, like no, like I work with the medicine wheels. Like I'm going in. Like I'm hibernating. I want to really work in those dreams and come out in the spring. Like that's where the medicine wheel opens up to. So I hear you on that, and I have to remind myself: find your own rate, find the own way of working. Yeah, use that yeah. time. You know, yeah. it's like New Year is a cycle that actually is not in tune with our energy, with our mm -hmm. body, with the energy of all that is with the universe. It's constructed. It gives us something to celebrate, which certainly isn't a bad thing, right? And it, it helps us make sense of this lived human experience and is a marker of time. But to your point, the energy right now for this new moon, I would argue this week, this month generally, is the opposite of kind of the stereotypical approach to a new year and a new season. And you're right, you know, you work the medicine wheel. I work with the zodiac signs and seasons. Aries is the start of the zodiac and Aries season is at the end of March. So it's yeah. the same, it's spring. It what is. are you bringing forth? You know, nature Plant. knows, the trees know, they drop their leaves, they turn inwards. You know, this is the time to quite literally plant the seed. Flowers yeah. don't bloom with the seed out in the open. They go down into the depths of the earth in order yeah. to they do. And that's true. And that's why I love working with it. It reminds me of that. And so I do have some of that, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's like, okay, come back ground, you know, you know where you are and you know how it works, you know? And yeah. I mean, that's why I love astrology. We're in, what's a good time to do stuff. You know, we do have a Murphy retrograde coming up. Yeah. How is that affect us, you know, this month? So I do like to know the astrology events. And I do think it's really important, but I think for planning and doing those kind of things, but sometimes that linear calendar just doesn't really do it for me. Yeah. But we have to work time somehow, I guess. It's a human quality for sure. Exactly. exactly. And the other thing too, I'll say about the new moon is that it needs to be honored and respected because it's the fertile void from nothing is what creates and builds everything. So if you're pushing against the energy right now, right? And trying to fill, fill up the cup, fill the emptiness. What's my calendar? What am I going to create? What's my plan, et cetera, et cetera. And you don't honor this time. That's like, no, 
let it be empty, let it be quiet, let it be still. It doesn't mean that it's emptiness and that's it. It's like, lay it all out there, let there be the void so that you can build and create and grow. Capricorn, I fondly call Capricorn the silver fox or the late bloomer. Capricorn knows that all good things come to those who wait. So nobody needs to be in a rush right now, especially with what they want to bring into the world or their passions, right? Or their purpose. Um, we all can take our time. There's no rush. And I agree with that. So energetically, what I would then turn that into taking an understanding that is like, sit, yeah. breathe, listen, really pull your energy into that God spot of who you are and take that energy in instead of like pushing it out and opening out and manifesting here and do it's like, pull it in. Yes. Be it's, still. Yeah. It's very much an internal. Yeah. Time, for sure. It really is. Yeah. We'll come out in the spring. <laughs> we'll come exactly. out in the spring. Yeah. I'll definitely. be there. Before. Yeah. I'll be there with you. Yeah. So as we go to start out this week, back to work, what would you say would be the best way beyond being still, being quiet to really work with this? Write down your intentions, think about your intentions that I can. Like, how would you say work with that energy as you move through, like going back to work and opening back up to the week? Yeah, such a good question. I'm going to say set it and forget it. Set your okay. goal, write your intentions, and then don't obsess about them. Go slow and steady. Allow yourself to go step by step. It's so easy, especially if you took this whole week off or some people had the ability to take the last two weeks of December off, maybe more. It's so easy to be like guns blazing, right? To have your energy be completely outwards and just share with the world, jump, leap. Mm, yeah. Take your time. A less, a, a less optimal expression of Capricorn is the obsession, is the feeling like there's not enough time, um, being very critical and judgmental. A higher, more optimal expression is step by step. I'm in this for the long game. I don't have to worry right now. This is not, you know, I'm in no rush. So yeah. set it for the week ahead. Yeah, and I laughed because as I was looking through calendars, putting down some dates and stuff, I, I like found myself like, oh my God, I'm already through the calendar. Like, you know, what happened, right? But it is that obsessing, like trying to move forward, get it all done. But it's like, okay, just relax. Let's just come back first quarter. Let's just work right where we are, you know, that kind of right. energy. But that is very reassuring because you can take some of that calmness and maybe you do, maybe you're traveling, maybe you're, you know, not able to get home, all right? So I see, I see Marissa joining us, but you know, it's like, still be calm, be quiet, pull your energy in, dream a little bit, understand a little bit more of that. Not that you have to get everything done at once as you move into this week. And I think sometimes people feel that way. Going to jump on the dream, going to jump on the good food, going to jump on this, gonna, you know, it's like, go in. And I love that you reminded us it's a yen, it's a yen energy. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and like, I'm human. I have a lot of Capricorn in my chart. Saturn is my chart ruler. I am so guilty and in the same boat for me. Okay, what am I going to do? Tomorrow's Monday, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, like knowing that Capricorn knows that it has everything within it to achieve whatever on its list. So yeah. set it, forget it, don't obsess, let it be, and one day at a time. One day at a time, yeah. And that's not to say that it's not, you know, like do your to-do list, yes. do that kind of that keeps you organized it's not like just forget it and just like be jolly hello but the not obsessing that be in the rhythm slow down especially now like we're in the winter winter's when we receive messages you know and the more you can slow down you can receive the messages for those new dreams and visions we have to shift a little bit you know what even if like even if like we are you know like oh i know my purpose i know my purpose which so is kind of how i've been feeling it's like wait a minute <laughs> You know what? Some things have shifted. Let's shift the purpose. And with the node shifting at all, it's like, okay, let's realign that energy. And I think that helps is to know like, okay, I can take a breath. I can ease back into this work week and I can still be okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And you know, that's something I struggle with too, of, especially as business owners, you just want to know, you want to be like, what's my purpose? What's the answer? And to that point of working with seasons, honoring the phases of the moon, remembering that if we're so finite about what the answer is, then we leave ourselves no room to grow <laughs> and to change yeah. and evolve. And, and, I, and I, bigger. I just can, no reason to be finite about that answer. No reason. Right. And with 
given times right now, it is like, go with the flow. And I think, again, let's go back to that whole idea of being quiet, grounding, listening. That's going to help you go with the flow. It really is. Yeah. So we do have a Mercury retrograde coming in. How is that also with like new moon into Mercury retrograde beginning of the year? Where is that going to guide us? Yes, great question. I also want to note that right now we are also in the middle of a Venus retrograde. Yeah. Venus, our desires, our passions, relationships, what we crave, then also coming into a Mercury retrograde. First off, especially the Mercury retrograde, everyone, they happen three times a year and they happen for three weeks every time. This new moon in Capricorn starting off the year, two retrogrades in January, I think that it further emphasizes kind of what we've already been talking about. You don't need to rush. Retrogrades are about reviewing, reassessing, recalibrating, reconsidering, reflecting. Like put a re in front of any word and that's what a retrograde is all about. It doesn't mean stop. It doesn't mean put your life on hold because last time I checked, that isn't reasonable or, or realistic, right? But just allow yourself to move slowly. As you said before, it doesn't mean not do your to-do list. Yeah. It doesn't mean put, you know, just stop what you're doing. We're humans. We have to live our lives. Like astrology is <laughs> planning. But what I really, the way I like to explain it is that astrology, working with energy like you do, it allows us to make better informed decisions. That's it. Yeah. If you know that we're in a new moon with Capricorn, Capricorn season, two different retrogrades, it just allows us to recognize and be kind to ourselves when things don't happen as fast as we want them to. Or maybe there's some more confusion, right? It's just, oh, right, this is kind of meant to be happening. This is the energy of the times. What can I do to work with it rather than against it or rather than blaming hey, when whatever I was saying I was so agree. I just started got excited because I so oh. agree sitting in the tub and had that realization, like, maybe this is what this is about. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, what the heck is wrong with me? Blah, you know, I can't quit crying. No, wait, maybe this is what this is about. That really helped me to like, kind of say, okay, I can understand that. Then I can slow down a little bit more and see what that next level is for me. See where I can open up at, at another way of working and all. And that really was very reassuring. Mm -hmm. So I think what is right along with that kind of idea when you kind of realize like, it's okay. Right now, I don't have to move as fast as I see the rest of everybody else moving as fast, right? right? It really does help you not take it personally and also not judge yourself, right? I think that's easy that we can do that, and especially some of that Capricorn energy too, judging ourselves, our worthiness of ourselves, some of that energy of the lower vibration of it. I think that's in there too, yeah. Yeah. Um, it made me think too, you know, with a new year, it's always like, okay, what are you going to create? What's next? And there's never any space for what do you want to take with you from the past year? You know, like, I think that for many people, it's been a really hard time for a very long time. And I think we can all say that the past two years in particular have collectively been incredibly taxing. So there's a lot that we want to leave behind from 2021. But all of these, you know, these retrogrades and looking backwards, reflecting, it, it also really begs the question, what do you want to take with you? What strengths do you already have in your pocket? I think that with you know, this resolution narrative, it's always like, how are you going to better yourself? What new things are you going to bring in as if there's no solid foundation right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny as you say that I was thinking too, because I remember at some point moving through all the emotions I go through this time of year, we talked about that before we started earlier, but looking through my pictures of the year, mm -hmm. right? And reflecting, because if you think about it, the pictures you're doing are some of the best things you want to keep. And it really allowed me to then go back, go and go, wait a minute, I did do this and I did do this and I did do this. It was like finding that gratitude as I saw the pictures. It actually became a really important thing for me to do before I finished out that year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So Sophia has been great. We could talk forever. I do I want to do a grounding meditation with everyone and look at the cards, do some great cards, but we have a second new moon coming in. And mm -hmm. so we're going to do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for having me. Um, yeah. Tell us, tell everybody where to follow you at, where they can find you. Yeah, at... um, drop it in the chat because I'm going to stay for the meditation. You can follow okay. me on Instagram, Sophia Adler underscore. Um, that's really the best place to get all of my astrological wisdom, knowledge, book sessions, all the intel. Shoot me a DM. I love to hear from you and stay in touch. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks.
All right, to your spirit. Thanks for joining us, for Thanks. sure. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that was fun to get a little update. I've enjoyed talking with her. I met Sophia through Jackie. Give Jackie a shout out. Jackie sent it one of our business groups. And, yeah, so we just said, let's do it. She reached out. So how much fun was that? And a shout out to all the astrologers out there. I've worked with many. I mean, I was just talking to Susan Miller. She's, she's kind of more of like a famed astrologer, one of the first astrologers I met in New York. She was a lot of fun. She was on the show. She did a predictive astrology. I work with Mandy Ray. I get a, I get a, um, I get a reading with her all the time, Armand Diaz in New York. And then I've worked with Vedic astrologies as well. So I think it's finding one that resonates. And I do think it's fun when you get a different understanding. I finally found a, there she goes, Sophia, she just put it in there. I finally found a calendar that I really love. And I have about three, but I opened it up and it gave me that clarity about that higher purpose and feeling like you're in a crisis. Like, okay, <laughs> you got my number, right? And I think that just really, again, it helps me to calm and recognize, let me keep listening for the messages. Let me keep owning the energy I'm in. Let me feel the feelings, all right? I know people tell me that and I'm a big, I have a big emotional body. Like, why are you so sensitive? But I need to learn to channel it. And I was actually talking about that. Like, why don't I can start channeling some of that? And I have an idea or two. It's going to take a little effort on my part, but hey. All right. So let's just take a pause and do that. Let's bring in the energy. Let's feel that imprint of being calm and listening and opening and connecting with your spirit. And then we'll look at the cards. All right. Stick around. I'll pull cards for you as well if you'd like. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes for a moment. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale all the way down deep into the earth. Present your spirit, call it in, call in that energy for you. Feel it coming in. As you drop your awareness into the heart, connecting with the greater spirit source creator, however you look at that, know that you are known, know that you are loved creating this beautiful sacred space, the cosmos, the stars, the moon, call in the masters, the teachers, the crystal beings, to just to create this energy, this vibration around you as you go to open up to the week. Feel that energy for you. And just take a moment and exhale all the way down, deep into the earth, all the way down. Feel the anchoring, the cording, the roots of who you are deep into the earth. And just hold that for a moment. Continue to breathe, but feel the roots connected to the earth. Slow down. Take all the energy in. The energy of closing the year, the energy of beginning a new year. Just ground all that energy. Connecting with the earth. And then right in the very center of your heart, God spot. Set out your intention your word, the elevated emotions of what you want to set forward in this new moon. And just send it out all around as we honor all the directions to the north for winter, the east for spring, the south for the summer, the west for the fall. Above you, Father Sky, below you, Mother Earth, right into the very center, into that God spot. Let it radiate all around you as you go to start this week, this year, with those elevated emotions, that vibration all around you. Set it out. And then start to bring the awareness back but hold that vibration, hold that vibration as long as you can or return to it as often as you can. All right. Check out the podcast because I gave you a year look at the cards. But for this week, we start out with the three of earth, which I really love because it's earth energy, Capricorn energy. But three, two is about that collaboration, that work that you do with others. All right, happens to be my word for the year, but it's also like look back and see what you've built. All right, one is the original idea, the, the initial idea, the seed. Two is duality. Three is when you step back and look at it. All right, but it is also about collaborating with others, looking at what you've done. A great way to start the year. All right, now if you chose card one, two, or three, or the rest of the cards that can help you look for this energy, the six of fire. 
All right, this is great. All right, if we add up 20, 22, we get a six, all right? Six is harmony. Six is like feeling good, putting a lot of experiences together. With fire, you get that inspiration, that transformation. You start to open up a little bit more. So take the fire energy as you reflect on what you've done and let it inspire your dreams and your visions as you move through this week. We also got the ace of water. Water's our love, our heart, our flow. Ace's new beginning. Ace's potential, perfect alignment for that new moon. All right, I always like to start with like that new love for yourself, all right? Sometimes in that Capricorn end of the year, we can have a little bit of self-judgment on ourselves or self-doubt on ourselves. Hello, I can raise the hand for me, right? Wondering about what you are and who you are, the worthiness, all right? That's another Capricorn word. So this reminds you to start again. Love yourself dearly. Love yourself dearly. Let go of all that judgment as you open up to this new energy in this new week, followed right by the star. New faith. Look, she's also got the butterfly of transformation. All right, the star is up there, the cosmic forces. Thank you, Sophia, for that understanding. Bring the energy in, open up, review your work, know that things are growing, even if it seems small, even if you have to course correct. We talk about that with the medicine wheel. Just course correct a little bit as you look at and evaluate. Collaboration is really an important aspect right now for all of us, for community, we've been isolated open up your boundaries have that harmony that comes in as you start to create the changes you want to see let that fire energy be that inspiration there's our first butterfly new love for you perhaps it's someone else but start with you loving yourself finding that value and who you are and what you're doing all right integrity i believe we talked about integrity that also helps you to really love yourself and then the star that renewed faith in who you are that transformation is coming. It is really coming. And it's going to be up to you to do your work, to find that vibration for you as well, and to put it out there for all that you do. All right, take a breath. Let me know how that resonates with you. If you'd like a card, let me know. So let's see what's going on with me. Check out the podcast, the spiritual retreat. I really want to do it. Fingers crossed. We need about three more people to commit. I know it's hard to make decisions, but reach out. I'd love to talk to you about it. Costa Rica in the spring, spiritual Reiki and shamanism, little plant medicine too. Excited about it. Reach out, DM me for more information or it is on my Instagram bio. We're at the, um, we're at the Reiki Association. We have stuff going on Wednesdays. This Wednesday is Reiki meditation. Paul Wolf, Wolf Therapy, will be offering a yoga, kundalini, gong, and Reiki as well on Thursday. And then the following week, if you want to come to a vision board with us, we did one today with Magic City. Da, 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 da. That would be the second Wednesday of the month. Definitely in the bio as well. Come join us. All right. Anything else? Let's see. I think I got it all for now. All right. So we've got some people asking for cards. Buffy, how are you? Marissa and Mark. All right. There we go. Buffy, we got the four of air, which is perfect for what we've been talking about. Like, take time to meditate. Clean up the mindset. Don't rush. Don't push. All right? The world will still be there. Look, she looks a little bit anguished. All right? Really find a balance through you. Air is mind. Mindset. Meditation. All right? All right. Mark. Mark, we got the daughter of water, which is kind of fun because it's just like, just keep opening your heart. I know it's a hard situation. Don't let anybody bother you. Don't make any judgment about it. Just be that loving self that you are. You're going to get better. You're going to make it through. Just be that fun, loving self that you are, and that's going to get you through. I love that card for you. I think that's perfect. Marissa, we got the Empress for you. It's also a three, all right? And this is just like, just be at one with the earth. Know that a lot of what's going on, you can't control, all right? We can never control Mother Earth. Like right now, I think today it dropped almost 30 degrees here in Birmingham, right? But just be at one with that energy. Know that it's okay, all right? Just be in alignment. Things are going to change. Things always move. You'll get back to where you need to be and just really open up with him with that hard energy. That'll be an easy way to do that with you. All right, Alina, I believe that's you from Atlanta, right? Hanged man. I love this card. Perfect alignment, too, for what's going on. Hanged man is all about surrender. Look at life with a different perspective, all right? Don't push. Get upside down. Let all that spiritual energy come down. Great card for what we've just been talking about. All right. I got a grade from Buffy. All right. 
Hey, Mercedes, happy new year. You switched over here. Thank you. All right, we got the four of water. All right, so this is some of that emotional energy that comes in. So this is also too, like, I love this because it's like a little invisible figure here. Like, all right, take some time for you. All right, it's been the holidays. Make sure you take some for you. Honor all the relationships of your heart that come in. It's almost like you feel a little invisible right now. Maybe you've been probably doing for everybody. So make sure that you take some of that emotional energy, move it through, honor all the many things, all the blessings that you've had through these last few weeks as you start this week and bring that forward as well. All right. Yay. Who did I miss? Let me know if I missed you. So what a great live tonight. Love talking with Sophia. So much energy out there. So many changes coming forward. Take it easy as you start the year, all right? I would say definitely set some kind of intention, brain dump, idea, something. And then, like she says, just like let it be as you start to work on it and move through the year. I am doing an abundance and Reiki course on Facebook in the Reiki Association group. We're trying to build that group. So if you want to come join, just come in. I've already started, but you can catch up and do it, or you can do a day or two lag behind. It's on Facebook. We'd love to have you. I do it every year, a great meditation. All right, everyone, what a great time tonight. Take a nice deep inhale. Exhale out. Return to that awareness right into your heart, to that intention, to that vibration that you want to lead with for this new moon, for the year ahead. Exhale, send it out. Sending lots of love and light and energy to you now. Thanks for joining us. Spirit, Namaste.